Today is one of those days I get to use one of my favorite techniques and that's throwing hair jigs. 332nd ounce, black, little chunk of Senko, and just casting and reeling. But <laughs> I love mixing it up and you're gonna see a lot of these fish, I'm actually working that hair jig like how you would work a regular bass jig for largemouth. I let it hit the bottom, crank it a little bit, let it hit the bottom, and it's amazing how many smallmouth will pick it up off the bottom. You catch a lot real and it's straight, but if you're around fish and you're sure of it and you're not getting bit, you have to try doing this where you let it stop and basically just dead stick it. It can really put fish in the boat on tough days when they're just not committing to coming up behind that hair jig as it's moving and sucking it in. The weather conditions on this day were light winds and the water started at 69 degrees in the morning and it was low 70s by the end of the day. Beautiful day on the water, a light little ripple, just enough to break it up so the fish couldn't see you very good. The last few years I've been using a mixture of rods for my hair jigs and I got one last year and I fell in love with it. It was the Mega Bass Flissa. Just a perfect rod. This model of rod is seven foot six. It lets you get that length and really snap that hair jig out and get a long cast. The power is a 2.5, fast action, and just a super fun rod to fish with. What I'm doing is I'm looking at that 360 and I'm watching for either rocks or beds out in front of the boat. A lot of guys complain about how easy it is to catch bedding smallmouth, and I agree. If you can see them, they bite almost everything. But what I like to do is use my 360, and I'm pinpointing beds that are 50 to 60 feet in front of the boat, and I'm hitting them like a sniper, and that makes it way more fun and interesting trying to get fish to bite doing it that way than to sit on top of them and have them hit anything you dangle in front of their head. You can see that awesome action of this rod as I'm fighting this fish. That upper half is bent like a U and it totally moves with the fish as it's thrashing around. Once you hook a smallmouth on a hair jig with this rod, you barely ever, ever have them come off. So one of the keys with that 360 is if you can see the structure and the cover that you're throwing it to, you know your bait's where it needs to be. That allows you to dead stick, take more time with each cast, and figure out what those fish want. If you don't have that, you could be casting where there's nothing and you're wasting casts. Even if you're just wasting a couple casts over every 10, at the end of the day, that's a lot of time. I'm out nine and a half feet using my electronics to spot these fish, chuck a hair jig out and let it sink slowly to the bottom. 
And when he gets down there, those fish just hammer it. So on this fish here, I'm looking down at the 360. I see a bed, line it up, fire that hair jig out past it, and then just slowly work it towards there, knowing that it's gonna come up to that bed real natural, and then just let it lay there, and the small one just goes down and hammers it. Look at the size of this smallmouth. Here's another example. I spin around, take a glance at the 360, and right when I see it, I notice a bed out in front of the boat. One quick cast, and it's game over for that fish. starting to rain here and we are on some giant smallmouth today. Look at the size of that fish. So a lot of these fish are repetitive. You can see it's cast after cast, looking at the 360, lining up the cast, putting it right on the juice, and then catching a nice smallmouth. Total efficiency. All I'm doing is going along here. You got a hard bottom and you got some indentations. Wherever there's that indentation, I'm throwing that hair jig and just bringing it across real slow. You got clumps of weeds and different stuff out here, but that is absolutely key is finding those indentations. Here's another big smallie. And I love just looking at the rod action and watching it fight and just seeing it follow that fish, give and take, Keep intention on that rod, no matter what that fish does, it keeps them buttoned. It is awesome setting the hook and knowing that you're probably gonna get that fish in. I see a fish on the 360. I'm gonna go up there, I'm gonna put this hair jig right on it and I'm gonna stick him. So the more I watch this technique, it's almost like you're just dragging flies. And it is. Everywhere you read, or a lot of guys you talk to, it's cast the hair jig out, reel it in slow. Cast it at a 45, reel it in slow. I do so much of that dragging and stopping mixed in with the straight retrieve because there are so many days where they prefer one over the other and you can load the boat. Whereas if you stick with a straight moving retrieve, you might catch a few and think it's good, but you're leaving a lot of fish on the table. So again, put this dragonfly technique in your arsenal. Another 
solid smallmouth. One of the biggest things I see with my electronics and how I use them is that efficiency. And I talk about the efficiency quite a bit. But when you can go out on the water and make every single cast count the entire day, to me that's crazy. I mean, every single cast. If you see something on your screen, you put it on there. If you don't see something, you're still moving the boat until you find the structure or the cover and you're putting the cast on it. So you're not wasting time casting the stuff that's not there. And you're just always putting yourself in that position. On an eight to 10, 12 hour day, efficiency of every cast. I'm not a math major, but I know the odds are in my favor of catching a bunch of fish if every cast is in front of one. You're just hammering stuff today. There's a bunch of different hair jigs on the market. And one that I'm really fond of is Jimmy D's. Great guy, we have good conversations, and I love giving him my business and letting them tie me some custom hair jigs. My go-to's are 332nd, and if it's a little windier, I need to move a little faster, or it's just really deep and I need the hair jig to get down to the bottom faster, I have some one eighth. And I always have them tie me up some black and some brown, but if I had to pick just one, it would be really hard to give up the black. I talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but I love using that 10 pound braid and I like using a bright braid, high vis yellow, and then tying that fluorocarbon leader to it. And usually eight pound line is what I go to, especially with the hair jig. Um, drop shots, sometimes I, I go down a size if I need to, but with a hair jig, usually it's moving, or even if you're letting it sit on the bottom, eight pound floral, basically disappears. Over the last three years, I've only broke my eight pound leader like once or twice. And that was because I was lazy. And after catching 15 to 20 big smallies, I never retied. My fault. One thing you'll notice as you watch these fish is there's a lot of fish in the same areas. And it gets back to, if you're not catching fish, just keep moving. Once I catch a big smallmouth, I'm always scouring that area looking for more. If it's a small fish, it doesn't always mean there's more there. But if you catch a big one, there's usually a reason. And if there's structure and cover right around there, I love to key on it and try to catch more fish off of it. Another Bram Warrior. They are absolutely beating up that hair jig. 